Hello guys and welcome to my video today. Today we're going to look at E again in two different ways. In another video we looked at the Taylor series for E, which was E equals the sum to infinity, n equals 0 to infinity, of 1 over n factorial. And now we will look at another formulation and prove that they are equal. The following formulation is used in compound interest. E is also equal to the following limit. The limit, n tending to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n, all to the power of n. So that gives us two ways to write E. One as a sum of an infinite series and one as a limit. We will now prove that they are both equal. We will show that the limit is equal to the sum of the Taylor series. So we want to show that the limit in blue is equal to the Taylor series in yellow. So how can we connect this to Taylor series or derive one from the other? To understand this, we need to use the binomial theorem. We won't prove the binomial theorem in this video. I'll cover that in another video. We will only use it to help prove that the limit is equal to e. So the binomial theorem states that a plus b all to the power of n is the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k times a to the k times b to the n minus k. So that n and then k in the parentheses just after the summation sign. That means n choose k. And the powers of a and b always add up to n. If you increase the power of a by 1, you decrease the power of b by 1 and vice versa. That's very important. So we're going to use the binomial theorem to expand the expression a plus b all squared. And I'm sure you can all tell me the answer right away, a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. But what if I told you to expand a plus b to the 735? Not so easy to do in your head, is it? So where did that come from? Well, it comes from the binomial theorem. So that's the general formula at the top. And then underneath we have the expression we're trying to solve which is n equal to 2, and that's the formula there for working it out. And that all becomes 2 choose 0, a to the 0, b squared, plus 2 choose 1, a to the 1, b to the 1, plus 2 choose 2, a squared, b to the 0. And we can do some simplification there. Anything choose 0 is 1, and anything choose anything like 2 choose 2 or n choose n is 1 also. We won't prove that in this video but they are two well-known results. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. We won't prove that in this video and anything to the power of 1 is just anything. So a to the 1 is a, b to the 1 is b. And you can quickly check that and that all simplifies down to b squared plus 2ab plus a squared. We can interchange a and b. We don't lose any generality doing that. So this was our binomial expression. a plus b to the n is the sum from k equals naught to n of n choose k, a to the n minus k, b to the k. So when you expand that out, you get the following. So just have a look at that for a moment. So now we need to define n choose k. n choose k is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. It's a well-known result. We're not going to prove it in this video. So the expression becomes... Have a look at this for a moment. Now we can do some simplification here. Any 0 factorial, they're equal to 1. 1 factorials are equal to 1. 
any part of the zero is equal to one. So we can simplify all that down to the following. So that's equal to a to the n plus n factorial over n minus one factorial a to the n minus one b plus all of that stuff. And then the last term is b to the n. Now that's kind of what we expected. If you have a plus b all to the n, then the two obvious terms in your expansion will be a to the n and b to the n. The binomial theorem allows us to find all the other stuff in the middle, which is not obvious. So the yellow stuff is all the stuff in the middle. You'll notice a couple of things here. The power of a and the power of b always add up to n. Very, very important. And the factorials in the denominator inside the parentheses, these are equal to the powers of a and b. So one of the factorials is the power of a and one of the factorials is the power of b. And that's always true. Setting a equal to 1 and b equal to 1 over n, we get the expression that we're trying to prove equals e when you take the limit of n going to infinity. So this is what we have, 1 plus 1 over n all to the n. So before we take any limits, we need to expand that out using the binomial theorem. And that becomes 1 plus n factorial over n minus 1 factorial times 1 over n plus n factorial over 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial 1 over n squared and so on all the way down to 1 over n to the n. And we can rewrite that like this and we can keep going and you'll see that it goes down to 6 n to the 6 but in general we can just keep going all the way down to n to the n. But I've wrote it like this on purpose because what I've done is I've taken the 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, 1 over 4 factorial, etc. I've taken them outside the parentheses and then the stuff in yellow is all the stuff involving n. And now we're going to do something with that stuff. So all of those expressions in yellow, when you take the limit as n goes to infinity, they are all equal to 1. Pretty spectacular, eh? So if they're all equal to 1 when you take the limit, then that just leaves you with 1 plus n times 1 over n, which is just 1 as well, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, and so on. And you can go on as long as you want to infinity. But we're not interested in the, those factorial terms for now. We're only interested in the expression in yellow for the moment. And we're now going to prove that that limit as n going to infinity is equal to 1. So the general form is limit n going to infinity n factorial over n minus k factorial times 1 over n to the k. Hashing out the factorials in the powers, we get n factorial over n minus k factorial times 1 over n to the k equals, well, n factorial over n minus k factorial. Take an example, take 9 factorial over 9 minus 2 factorial. So k is 2 and n is 9. So that would be 9 factorial over 7 factorial, which would be 9 times 8 because you take away the first seven numbers and you're left with nine times eight. So nine is n and eight is n minus one. So if k is two, that just becomes n times n minus one. If k was three, it would be n times n minus one times n minus two. So the number in the last term will be one less than k. I'll say that again. The number, the digit, like one, two, three, four, the very last number in the last term will be one less than k. 
So that all comes out to n on n minus 1 all the way down to n minus and then in brackets k minus 1. That k minus 1 ties in with what I just said. I said that the last term, the number in the last term will be 1 less than k. That's k minus 1. And then the n to the power of k in the denominator, well that's just n multiplied by itself k times. So you can write it like that, n times n times n. Now we don't know what k is. In general, k can be whatever you like. So I'll write it like that, but there's k terms on that denominator. In the numerator, there's also k terms. How do we count them? Well, if we count from the first one, which is n, the second one is n minus 1. So let's suppose that's our first one. So n minus 1, let's imagine that's our first one. Then the next one after that will be n minus 2, which is our second one. And then we go all the way down to n minus k minus 1. So that will be our k minus 1th term, if we ignore the n at the front. And now we'll add back in the n at the front to get k, because we've got k minus 1 terms after the n. Add in the n, we've got k terms. So we've got k terms on the numerator divided by k terms on the denominator. So we can split them up into k fractions as follows. That's n over n times n minus 1 over n times all the way down to n minus k minus 1 in brackets over n. And then we can take limits. So it collapses to that because the first term is n over n which is just 1. So now we actually have k minus 1 terms. And that's a product. So now we're going to look at that and we're also going to take limits. So taking limits we have the limit of n going to infinity of n minus 1 over n times dot 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 times n minus k minus 1 in brackets over n. And then we can rewrite that as the limit of n going to infinity 1 minus 1 over n. So n minus 1 over n is just 1 minus 1 over n, that's pretty obvious. You're dividing the numerator by n, n over n is 1, 1 over n is 1 over n. And that's all the way down to 1 minus k minus 1 over n. So we're multiplying all those little limits together, the 1 minus, etc. So the limit of 1 minus that stuff, in, which involves n on the denominator, there's k minus 1 of those, we're multiplying them all together, and we can summarize that in a nice succinct form. We can write it as the product, that symbol there, notation means product, of i equals 1 up to k minus 1, of 1 minus the limit as n going to infinity of i over n. Well, the limit as n going to infinity of i over n is 0 because i is fixed. I is just a constant, it's a number like 1, 2, or 3, whatever. And n is allowed to go off to infinity. So that thing there will go off to 0. So we basically have 1 minus 0 multiplied by itself k minus 1 times. And that's just obviously 1. So plugging all that back into the expansion we had earlier, we see that the limit of n going to infinity of 1 over k factorial n factorial over n minus k factorial 1 over n to the k, that's equal to 1 over k factorial the limit n going to infinity of n factorial over n minus k factorial of 1 over n to the k. On the second line I've taken the 1 over k factorial outside the limit because it doesn't involve n. And we've just showed that the limit on the second line to the right of 1 over k factorial, that limit is equal to 1. We just proved that there. So that means that whole thing is equal to 1 over k factorial. And then if you go back to the expression we had earlier, that means all of those yellow terms equal 1 in the limit. The limit n going to infinity, they all go to 1. 
and then you're just left with the 1 over 2 factorial, the 1 over 3 factorial, etc. That's basically what that there is saying. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n is equal to the limit of n going to infinity of 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus dot 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 plus 1 over n factorial. Now when you write it as a sum like that, it looks like a finite expression if n is finite. But just to be very clear here, we're letting n go to infinity. So we're taking the limit n going to infinity. And that's very, very important. That's the important thing here. Over a finite number of terms, you can't say that they're equal. In fact, they won't be equal. Work it out. Use the 1 plus 1 over n to the n for a finite n and then work out the Taylor series sum for a finite n. In general, they won't be equal. They're only equal at the limit at infinity. You have to take the limit to infinity and then they're equal. Then they're equal to e. Just a subtle point. So that equals the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial, which is the Taylor series for e, which is what we were trying to prove. So that concludes the proof. The two expressions are equivalent and equal e. The limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n all to the power of n, and the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. They both equal e. So that concludes the video. Have fun with E. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.